Hi, welcome to a new edition of this uh, AI Entrepreneur Experience. Good morning for those who are listening to us from, from America. Good evening for those who are hearing us from Asia. We're here today to talk about blockchain. Probably most of you have heard about this new technology who is said to change completely the way we do business. Uh, we're here today to clarify a little bit uh, what is exactly this technology, which are the opportunities that give us in uh, our business, uh, in our day-by-day -day business, and also about the risks and opportunities that this will generate in our private lives. I have today with us Oscar, Oscar Flores. But before giving uh, the word to Oscar, we would like to remember you that there is a hashtag AI conference in which you can uh, post your questions in, in Twitter and we're going to be uh, transferring these questions to, to Oscar so he can uh, answer you. Oscar is the CEO of Made of Jeans, a company that is using blockchain uh, as a reality. I mean, they, they, they are not working in, in future dreams, but in, in real um, uh, uses of blockchain. Uh, in his in his company, his company has been uh, awarded uh, by the MIT as one of the most innovative companies in Spain. And Oscar Flores uh, will be here today to talk about how are they using blockchain and how uh, does he see the future of blockchain in not only in his industry, health, but in the rest of industries. So, Oscar, Thank welcome. You, Thank you for being today with us here in. Uh, our series of conferences. And I would like to ask you a first and very direct question. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will ask you please to be uh, educative. Uh -huh. uh, the, the question is very easy. What is blockchain? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, blockchain is a chain of blocks. I mean, it's a, it's a cryptographical way in order that different transactions, uh, they are, so every previous transaction references the next one and, and so far. So at every moment, you know, you cannot change the information contained in one of these blocks without altering the whole blockchain. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it will not, you know, it will be visible that someone altered the, the whole structure. This, this implies that all the information, all the transactions that are uh, inserted in this blockchain, uh, well, are public and cannot be uh, modified without uh, a lot of people agreeing on modify them. Mm -hmm. So the majority of people agreeing to modify it. Okay, that's clear. Um, when we when we listen to the word uh, blockchain, uh, the first thing that comes into our mind is uh, any type of cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is it the same cryptocurrencies and blockchain? No, I mean, in fact, a currency is just a, a limited good. No, so gold is a limited material that mm -hmm. uh, has a value because mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, what we can get with blockchain is to create uh, an amount of a number, an amount mm -hmm. of uh, coins that are available for the people that is using this blockchain. And what we use blockchain for is to act as a distributed ledger. So at the end, uh, it's just putting entries in a, in a, in a, in a book uh, saying, OK, at this moment, I own one million coins. But if I give you half of it, I own 500,000 coins, and you have the, the, the other half. Uh, if I pay 10 coins to this guy, uh, I have 10 coins less and this guy has 10 coins more. So, and all these transactions is what is just world blockchain for. Uh, the, the nature of blockchain makes that uh, it's impossible to say, okay, I pay you 10 coins, but I don't subtract 10 coins for me. Or, or 10 days uh, later, I say, no, now I have 100 coins. No, I mean, if you have 10, uh, you have 10. And if you don't have another people giving you more, more, more money, you will not have more money. Uh, blockchain is not the money. The money is the concept that the blockchain is, uh, well, it's uh, representing. And at the end, it's just that. It's just a ledger, it's just a book where we annotate the different entries, the different transactions that we have, and at a given moment we have, well, the, the, the result of the initial state plus all the transactions that, uh, that have occurred till, till that moment. We can use that for cryptocurrencies or we can use that for a lot of different, of different uses. For example, knowing how much electricity, uh, electricity I have uh, spent this month, uh, or, or well, how 
if on a specific day uh, something was uh, was existing or not. So mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be a number that is getting subtracted or, or added. So, so that blockchain was, was first and then cryptocurrency is an application which are based on, on, on blockchain. Exactly. So the blockchain, blockchain is a technology. Blockchain is just a database. It's a, it's it a, a, it's okay. in a special kind of database, uh -huh. a distributed database that has a specific uh, uh, and specific characteristics that make it uh, well uh, very difficult to modify uh, from uh, from a uh, single party to modify the contents that are in the in this database. Oh, so it's a single database that has a high degree of consistency among no, other things. It's a distributed database distributed. where everyone that is accessing this database has a whole copy of all the transactions that are that okay. are there. So, for example, a bank. Mm -hmm. could have their own database mm -hmm. and they can say okay subtract 10 euros from this account the, it's, it's the bank who is saying that mm -hmm. of course i mean then you have other banks that uh, they need to i mean you need to, to coordinate all the all the all the transactions but in blockchain uh, you don't need this role of the bank that is saying no i'm a i'm a certified authority to say that you have 10 euros uh, less now because someone asked me 10 euros from your part in blockchain, you don't need this, this role. I mean, in blockchain, you and me, without the intervention of a bank, we can agree that we are getting this transaction. And, and we don't need uh, a bank or we don't need a regulator to say this transaction occurred and this transaction is, is according to the rules. Okay. So going a little bit further, now that we know the basic uh, technology concepts, let's say, uh, let's, go, let's go to talk about made of genes. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us a little bit more about your company okay. and how did you end up finally using blockchain mm -hmm. for uh, genetic purposes? Mm -hmm. So Made of Genes is a brand of a company, of a bigger company called uh, Genome Core. Uh, in Genome Core we work in the, in the core of uh, transactional genomics. So at the end, genomics is as useful as you use it for, for, for healthcare purposes at the, at the end of the, of the day. I mean, it can be useful, uh, it can be useful for research. But the, the big value of, uh, of genomics is applied in total on what uh, it's called personalized medicine. Mm -hmm. Personalized medicine is the uh, new paradigm of medicine that instead of uh, uh, assuming that a single treatment works for all the patients that are having a single, well, the same disease, patients with certain, the same disease can have different treatments, can have different evolution of the disease, can have different prevention plans. So, and this is according our biological basis that is our DNA. Of course, uh, this implies that uh, if you want to make a, a cost-efficient model, uh, the model that we are we are using and we are pioneering in the we are pioneers in the world about uh, using this, this this model is saying, okay, instead of reading a specific pieces of your DNA, we read the whole genomic sequence, your whole genome, so all the three thousand the three billion bases uh, of the of your of your three, uh, three billion letters of your DNA. So from here, we, it's like an encyclopedia. We don't have to interpret all at once, but we can access different pieces of this, of this sequence and make it, uh, sense of, uh, out of them in, a, in the specific moment that, uh, that it's required. So this means that every time that you go to the doctor, the doctor can check if you have different risks according to your DNA without having to sequence again the, 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 the sample of saliva, the sample of blood, and going to the laboratory, etc. So you have all the information already digitalized, and with just a single click, you can have access to that. This has a lot of sense in, uh, well, in the healthcare context and in a governmental context. So at the end, the, the healthcare providers are usually or private insurance companies or uh, public governments. When you are in this, when you are delivering this kind of uh, healthcare services uh, from in, in, this, in these channels, uh, it's, I mean, it's the regulation says that you need to ask the informed consent of a, of a user, saying, "Okay, I will t uh, take a sample of your saliva, and uh, what I will do with this." Is uh, I will process it to extract the DNA. I will send the DNA to a laboratory. The laboratory will process it in this way, and I will get this information that I will interpret that way. This will go to your doctor, and you authorize this specific use of, the, of your sample. I cannot ask you, okay, give me just a sample of your DNA, DNA, and I will do whatever I want with it. This, this is not legal. So. If you take that in mind and, and you add here what I, I, I explained just before about uh, having your, your genome sequence in a, in a platform and reuse it during your life, uh, the need of having an efficient channel for uh, giving the informed consent, it's, it's really, I mean, it's a new need that is, it's appearing in the market. This uh, was three years ago, last year, well, this year, in fact, the new GDPR, the new uh, privacy law mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, in the European countries, 
uh, uh, well, entering the, the well, starting to be to be a Bible, and and well, now everything that you do, not just healthcare, you need this mm -hmm. kind of uh, of informed consent, saying, okay, your data will be used for these purposes. This people is the one that will have access to it during this time, etc., etc., etc. So, in order to make this process of informed consent as compliant as possible, at the same time that we ensure that the the the, the privacy and the well, and the compliance of the whole system, we need the certification about that um, each single use that you say that you approve, it's really approved by your part. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, we had two different paradigms of, uh, of using that. The traditional one, which is working with um, traditional certification authorities, and, and this means that there is an entity that people agreed that uh, they have a, a, well, a power to, to certify that, uh, for example, uh, digital certificates are valid, so what we use for electronic signatures, no? mm -hmm. that is based that I have one private key, I have one public key, I can give you my public key, and you can sign things with that, and I can check the integrity with my private key. So this is a called asymmetric encryption, and it's the basis of all the uh, encrypted transactions that mm -hmm. we do in the in internet. So every time that you go to a web page that says, okay, this connection is secure, it's, it implies that uh, the transactions with the, uh, within this uh, website are uh, undergoing with this, uh, with this technology of asymmetric keys. So to do that, you need to ask the certification authority and a specific certificate in order that you can imagine that the informed consents are PDF files, yeah. uh, that every PDF file that uh, is generated, it's stamped by the, digitally stamped, by the, by the certification authority. Mm -hmm. This means that I have to pay for every different, for every different transaction. Uh, in the other side, we had the blockchain, and blockchain allowed me to prove that, uh, well, that this informed consent exists and was not modified at this, uh, well, existing this specific data, I'm saying that it was created, and it has not been modified uh, since, since then, uh, for free. Because at the end, what I do is I, I create a hash, it's mm -hmm. a, like a fingerprint of the, of the yeah. document, and this fingerprint is inserted into, the, into a blockchain transaction. So. I cannot, I mean, if I have this, this specific hash, which is an, uh, a one directional function above, the, above this, this document, and this is in the blockchain, and I cannot alter the blockchain, it means that this document has not been altered. Otherwise, this hash could not be here. Mm -hmm. So mm, this, the price that you have to pay for, for a stamping one in, in commercial services, the price that you need to pay for a stamping one, one PDF, uh, using the traditional scheme is about one euro. Mm -hmm. The price that you need to pay, the minimum transaction that you need to pay in, in blockchain in order to be able to put this hash in a, in a transaction is less than one cent of euro. So mm -hmm. at the end, it's much um, cheaper than, than whatever other option was in there. From here, we, uh, we started leveraging the, the, the process. So at, at, at this specific moment, we are using uh, for all, all the informed consents, the both, uh, both mechanisms, because at the end, it could be that uh, hospitals or governments, they are comfortable with exactly, blockchain. They are more reluctant to, to implement uh, solutions based on blockchain. So we are using both. But the, good, mm, the nice thing of blockchain is that at the end, blockchain is like that. It's like a database. But it's uh, like a database that it's not only storing information. It uh, can also store little pieces of software, no? little programs that they can do something at mm. provided that different conditions are met. So for example, I can, I can put in this database a transaction that says, okay, if tomorrow it's rainy, uh, I will give you 10 euros, but not today. Provided that tomorrow will rain, I will okay, give you so 10 you euros. You can put some logic on this exactly. database. Exactly. So, so at the end, this is called a smart contract, and it's just that. It's like a contract that, uh, as we go to the notary and we put the, the contract there, we put this contract in the, in the blockchain, mm -hmm. and provided something, it will it will execute the, yeah. the, the statement that it's, that it's uh, well, that it's uh, defined there. So this means that, for example, in, 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 of course, in cryptocurrencies, you can do the, like this kind of thing. So provided that, uh, I don't know, France wins the, the, the World Cup, uh, I will give you 100 euros. No? And mm -hmm. you can do betting with, with that, provided that these 100 euros are blocked in the, in, the, in the blockchain and they will be released on your account if, uh, if, uh, if, if an event happens. Exactly. 
Uh, in, in our case, what this allows is, okay, I have to ask you every time that I want to use your data or I want to access your data, I have to ask your informed consent. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe you are fine by uh, allowing someone to use this data for whatever purposes they want, provided that they are researchers or they are uh, NGOs or they are, uh, I don't know, or, or, or they are paying you something in exchange or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it, uh, you want to, to define it. So, with a single action from the user, I, instead of singing in a specific informed consent, what I can sing is an, an, an generic one, a, a smart contract. A smart contract. Say, okay, provided these rules, I will give access to my data mm -hmm. in these in these scenarios. So this means that, for example, you can go to the doctor once and authorize every single uh, access to your data for different checkups during your life. No? If, if this is from of, mm -hmm. of, of your interest, of course, I mean, there has to be mechanisms to, to cancel this, this contract, mm -hmm. etc., etc. But this is something that we cannot do with a traditional database. I mean, at the end, mm, people will be relying on us, on, on, on a company, on a, on, a central, uh, on a central organism, that they will execute this, this, uh, this contract. When you put that on the blockchain, well, I mean, the system ensures that this will be executed. It's the same as going to the notary and saying, okay, if I die, give all my, my, my assets to my family. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you have to go to the notary. If we put that on blockchain, at the moment that I, uh, the, the system sees that uh, you are dead, that the assets will be transferred without intervention of uh, anyone else. Okay. And uh, you're referring constantly to the blockchain, like the blockchain, no? Mm -hmm. And I have the same sensation like when the internet was starting, mm -hmm. that people say, no, this is on the internet. And internet was somewhere, s something somewhere mm -hmm. and without knowing exactly what it was, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when you talk about the, the blockchain, uh, is there anybody owning it? Because if somebody is owning it, then it's against this concept of no centralized administration, right? No, so I mean, how is it technically implemented? I mean, the, the blockchain is like talking about the database, no? Yeah. Where is the database? Uh -huh. and, well, it can be in a lot of places. In fact, there is not a single blockchain. There is the Bitcoin's blockchain, which is the blockchain that is used by the people that owns crypto, the Bitcoin cryptocurrency. There is the Ethereum blockchain, which is the blockchain that uses people who owns uh, Ethereum, Ethereum cryptocurrencies. There are private blockchains, for example, you can go to Microsoft or to IBM and, and purchase uh, blockchain as a service. I mean, for example, well, what we are proposing in the, in the smart contracts, we are using a private blockchain to, to implement that. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, well, for example, uh, Bitcoin's blockchain uh, doesn't uh, support smart contracts. Ethereum, which is another cryptocurrency, yes, you can do a smart contract with Ethereum, mm -hmm. but blockchain, no. So we cannot do this kind of automatic transactions with the current implementation of blockchain. And who owns that? I mean, no one owns that. I mean, at the end, it's when you when you use a, a private service. Yes, I mean, at the end, what you need in order to make a blockchain robust is that a lot of different nodes, a lot of different users are using it. This can be real users. This can be people that they are owning a, a small computer in their in their places, and and this computer is keeping a, a copy of this database. Or this can be Microsoft or IBM or a big IT uh, installing these clients in a lot of their computers in order to make it uh, robust. There is even a, a governmental blockchain. So, for example, where we are working in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, and there uh, they moved all the the, the proper the registry of all properties. They moved all the internal banking system, etc., etc. They moved that to a governmental blockchain. Mm -hmm. that is managed by, by by the government, and it's blocked to other users. So at the end, it's just that. It's like a database that is installed in different nodes, in different computers, uh, that, well, someone owns that. It can be different owners, or it can be that a big owner has a lot of, of, of chains. Mm -hmm. It's secure or not. I mean, it's as secure as, I mean, if, uh, for example, the, the Bitcoin blockchain is really secure because at the end, a lot of people from all across the, the, the globe, they, they have access to this, to this database. If you own all the possible nodes uh, that you are installing this this uh, this uh, well this technology, well the the I mean my, my question there will be why are you using blockchain? Because if you are the one that is defining at the end to, to change something in blockchain, that has to be it's, it's a very democratic system. You need to uh, so more than half of the people implementing the so for example imagine that bitcoins wants to make a new evolution yeah. of, the, of their blockchain so half of the people in the in the in the blockchain has to agree to make this modification and when this happens 
all well, it can happen, in fact, it is going to happen, that the half of people wants one thing, half of people, they don't want this change, and then there is a fork. So from, from a specific day, uh, last year, there are two uh, block, uh, Bitcoin blockchain. There is the traditional Bitcoin and there is Bitcoin Cash, which is a fork of the original Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, and this happened because a lot of people said, okay, I want to change how it is working, the algorithms that are using that. They agreed on, on changing that. And, and well, without being able to change the transactions, because no one will accept uh, to change my, my own transactions, mm -hmm. but everyone agrees, or half of the people agrees, to change these, these rules, no? and, and the rules change it. If you are a government and you are controlling all the blockchain and you want to change something in the blockchain, you can't do that. So at these specific implementations... It makes no yeah, that much it's, sense, it's, no? it's weird because it's much easier to implement a traditional database that yeah. does the same. Yeah. So um, do you agree that there is kind of a bubble about yeah, blockchain? Absolutely. Yeah? absolutely. I, mean, I, I mean, at the end, I, I mean, you can, you can enter to, to our webpage, uh, genomecore.com, and, and you can check the, the, the claims that we made. You will see that we are using blockchain in a small line in the section that we are using a uh, genome care, which in genome care is in a transactional system, whatever, whatever. But uh, I don't consider my company a blockchain company. I mean, mm -hmm. blockchain is a technology saying that I have a company managing databases. There are companies, but there are very few companies that mm -hmm. are completely devoted to managing databases. Uh, otherwise, you are using, you are doing something, and this something is used using blockchain. But you can be using on different, different methods. So at the end, well, it's like the, the graphene uh, a few years ago that yeah. everyone was talking about the graphene and, and every and the cars. Yeah, materials were really yeah, yeah, yeah. And, graphene. And electronics and all the all the uh, properties, uh, low cost, it, it, it uh, was, long life. It was wonderful. But well, yeah. I, I don't see graphene. I, I never seen something made of graphene in a real context. Yeah. So I mean, at the end, well, this thing happens. They are. There was also the, the speculative movement of the cryptocurrencies that it yeah. was, well, this was real money. So at the end, mm -hmm. that, then there was a real, a real uh, equivalency with, uh, with real money. So people were just betting at it to go higher, higher, higher. And at some point, well, the, the, this cryptocurrency uh, bubble uh, well explode. And, and now people, it's, uh, well, I buy, I bought uh, like 100 euros of, of, uh, of uh, bitcoins. And now I keep the same bitcoins, but now they worth half of the euros that I spend with that. So, and they are not uh, they are not going up again. So, well, I mean. Uh, okay. So we are not going to ask you for a for a for a trick uh, how to put money in blockchain, but we are going to ask you for a new tendencies that you think. What, what do you think that the future of blockchain is? I mean, do you see any business area where your business uh, scenario where do you see that? Blockchain is going really to make a big change, a disruptive change. I mean, I any think sector, that sector, any industry. I think that cryptocurrencies are, are a real thing. I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, uh, the need to pay with mm, unregulated money. No, so yeah. uh, it's it's a it's a real need. If you can pay with with cash, uh, well, this is something that people don't know what you are paying. But if you are want to pay something in well, in black in the in the by internet, you have a problem because. You only can pay by, by credit card or bank transfer, etc., etc. So the fact of having a mm, well, a currency that it's used out of the legal, the legal, legal circuits, yeah. It's a, it, I mean, it's a really powerful value proposition at the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I, I don't enter in ethics or I, I don't want to enter in the in the legal aspect, but it's real. It, the, the truth is that it's solving a real need. In other contexts, well, I mean. In every place that you don't trust the parties that are that are doing that, and for example, uh, democracy, it's a real example of that. So, for mm -hmm. example, you could see that elections. You talk elections thinking about exactly, elections. Exactly. So, if you are going to the to to uh, an election and and you don't trust the current government by implementing blockchain, and if you implement blockchain well, well, I mean, you cannot do um, you cannot do tricks in the on the results. Mm -hmm. So, because well. And, and this is also a very, uh, very powerful way to apply it. The problem is that the governments that they uh, will, they will be willing to implement this. Well, probably they don't have problems in the in the democratic quality of their of their decisions. And the governments who have problems regarding that, probably they will not implement blockchain. So because at the end, with blockchain, it's very it's very nice. But the people, I mean, at the end of the day, there are some specific people that are acting as a certifiers or they are acting as a 
so they are not equal. No? They are they are people that have more rights or more power than the rest of the of the mm -hmm. guys, and this is something that that can work in, in some 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 people will want to have that. So in these cases, blockchain is really difficult to to enter. So do you think that we are in a situation where uh, it is still more worthy to advise on how to use blockchain better than using, in fact, blockchain? So it's something. It's more. Uh, something that is about to come than a reality? I mean, I know that you're using mm -hmm. it in, in reality, but as you mentioned, it's only a portion mm -hmm. of your business. I mean, your business is not based on blockchain. If now blockchain disappear, you will change this into another technology, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe more expensive or whatever. So, in which situation are we? I mean, the, the reality is that 90% that of the companies that are basing their value proposition on blockchain, they will fail. Uh -huh. 90%, yeah. that's, the, you, that's 95, your prediction? 95, 95. 98. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, a lot of them. Yeah. The problem is that this 2%, yeah. they will be the new Facebooks, the new Twitters, yeah. the new... So, okay, yes, we know, it's a bluff, uh, it's a hype, it's whatever. Yeah, it's true. And, and, mm -hmm. and right now, there are not enough use cases. In, I mean, I will say that one third of one quarter of the, of the new companies that are appearing, they are working with blockchain. Okay, there is no market uh, need for that. But it's true that the survivors of this of this bubble, yeah. uh, they will be really powerful in the future. So, I will not advocate for saying no, no, don't do uh, anything in blockchain. I mean, well, do that, but you have that. The odds are are, are very in, very in, in in every event that I have been attending for the last one year, or one and a half years, uh, the keynotes that uh, are about blockchain mm -hmm. are they are sold out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's the more uh, uh, trending one is where most of the people want to attend. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, if you have to give a recommendation, let's imagine that somebody is listening to us, and he has an uh, entrepreneur uh, soul, let's mm -hmm. say, and he he wants to or she wants to 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 create a business based on blockchain. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you give him or her? Can you give them an idea of which is a sector, not being just consulting on blockchain, mm -hmm. okay? But real thing, a sector that you think that can benefit a lot from blockchain? I mean, I will say that all sectors are, are, uh, can, be, can be a good sector. I mean, the, the, the problem is that sectors, they have different use cases, no? Yeah. At the end, uh, talking about finances, yeah, well, finances, in, it's, you can try to do blockchain for a bank, but there are thousands of companies doing that already because they see that this is more efficient than the traditional banking system. So eventually, banks will uh, start using blockchain, and, and in fact, there are some initiatives about to, about how to do how to do that. There is a one, there is a blockchain called Ripple, which is that it's, it's, it's a blockchain created by very powerful banks, national mm -hmm. banks, mm -hmm. in order to uh, to change. Uh, well, the, instead of using the traditional banking system, to use their own blockchain to make these transactions. So of course, if you can get 0.001% uh, of this market of banks making transactions. Yeah. The, the market is amazing. But, uh, well, it's true that mm, the technology is not so complicated for a bank to implement that by themselves. Mm, at the end, where, where I think that the, the biggest disruption will be is in the same cases as, as Uber, as Airbnb, as these guys that they didn't follow the traditional path uh, implementing a new technology for example, like my, ta my taxi, no? so I'm using the traditional taxi uh, uh, systems and I'm just allowing you to book it uh, through, the, through, the, through the app. Okay, this is disruptive, but well, no? Yeah. I mean, Uber says, no, no, people will put their cars on the streets and they will start, this is disruptive. So uh, at the end, uh, where uh, blockchain will make the most impact is in the sectors where no alternative exists or a very inefficient alternative exists for doing that. So for example, uh, I don't know, I'm just thinking out loud, no? yeah. uh, probably it exists, but uh, um, a, a lending system, so to borrow money to other, other people, yeah. uh, real small money, credits. exactly, like uh, small credits for, for, for purchasing whatever you want, uh, provided by other, other particulars, that they want, other individuals that they want to put in a, bit, a bit of money on that, that is regulated by a blockchain, and no one can do anything else than, than, than well, ensuring that the transaction, are doing well. well, this is something that goes completely against the banking system because you are empowering people that they can do that. And you can say, okay, but I don't trust people that are, are giving me money or I don't trust that this money can be, can be recovered. I don't have the tools for ensuring that uh, 
when these people has the, 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 the people that I'm borrowing money, if they have money, they will uh, uh, give, it back give, it, give it back to me. So how I can ensure that? Well, blockchain can do that. And in this case, if you make a big consensus about how to implement that, well, you are creating the Uber of banking system. Yeah. And this, you can do that with technology. So, well, in these cases where, where you don't trust the, the other parties, blockchain is, the, is a must. Okay. So you see a window for peer-to-peer -peer banking based on blockchain? Exactly. That would be. Exactly. So um, places where, so uh, sectors where you don't trust to do these kind of transactions, uh, you can do that by blockchain. Mm -hmm. But of course, I mean, usually if they are related to money, if they are related to properties, if they are related to cars, etc., they are regulated so far. Yeah. And you cannot do that without going against the law. And, and it's a very powerful, uh, a very powerful um, right of the of the government to be uh, the only um, party able to legislate on, on that. So it's really difficult to to make it change and make it legal. No? Mm -hmm. Airbnb was was a was a was a kids game compared to to trying to make a, a parallel registry system for uh, registering your properties and your houses and your flats, etc. I mean, you cannot do that. I mean, mm -hmm. the government will not yeah. accept it. But if you are able to do that, I mean, well... And a, given the fact that it's it's an efficient system, meaning that mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned before some ratios about the cost of a, mm -hmm. a blockchain transaction compared to a traditional transaction, it is much more efficient. Do you think that this is an opportunity for emerging countries to advance the level of, uh, mm, let's say, use of technology? Because it's a, it's a cheaper way to go and to, to move on a, on a long path? Well, this is not really that way because blockchain can be efficient. So the business model that appear in, in blockchain can be more efficient because they don't have these, these intermediaries that no, I mean, intermediaries mm -hmm. over, overcharge the system and they, and, and they need to, to, to earn money. And of course, I mean, it, you cannot, uh, they are doing a function there. But uh, regarding technological implementation, blockchain is terribly inefficient. I mean, you need a lot of energy and a lot of power to run blockchains because blockchain is based on a, on a very single, a very simple premise that uh, in order to uh, sign a transaction, to sign a block, you need to do a lot of calculations over this block. So a lot of mathematical operations yeah. to, to, to find a pattern that when it matches with the block signature, it has a, a certain pattern. So this means that you need a lot of miners, a lot of people that are uh, working in this blockchain in order that they are using their, their computing time, uh, of the, 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 the CPU time of their computers, in order to validate each different, each different block. So this means that you need a lot of computers to validate a single transaction of blockchain. And, and this is really a problem. I mean, in fact, if you, there are some graphs about the energy consumption of a, of a blockchain, and they, they, they are amazing. I mean, it's not sustainable that the way that blockchains, the most of blockchains work right now, is not sustainable. Okay, I mean, so it's only efficient in terms of cost efficient, maybe. It's efficient. But not it's efficient because you uh, you skip the, the intermediary, but it's not technologically efficient. It's much efficient to have a database with a single computer. One. Exactly. Yeah. So you only need one, but before you needed only one database and one computer managing this database, and now you need, in order to be trustable enough, you need tens of thousands of machines running to certify each different transaction and everything is done in parallel. So yeah. the, the certification doesn't happen in a single place, it happens in all the places. So it's technologically speaking, it's really inefficient. Yeah, it's amazing because uh, I was asking you this question because I have read uh, many articles, wrong articles, mm -hmm. assuring that this was a green technology mm -hmm. and that makes me laugh because it's <laughs> exactly the other way around, right? So yeah, it yeah. could be efficient in terms of, of cost, right? but not efficient in terms of, of energy consumption. It, it allows the, the creation of, of more efficient business, business models, yeah. but technologically speaking, it's, 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 I mean, it's, it's not only inefficient in terms of energy consumption, it's also inefficient in terms of, of time, the, the, of time, the yeah. number of operations that you need to, to do in order to make a transaction. In fact, there were some numbers that saying that uh, Visa or MasterCard, they, they can manage, they can handle like uh, thousands of requests per, per second, while blockchain supports eight, Bitcoin's blockchain supports eight uh, transactions per second. So, I mean, we cannot use blockchain to go to the, to the grocery store or we cannot go to, to the market with, uh, with blockchain. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not supported in a, in a, in a broad uh, uh, application. So I think that, and 
by design is that, that way because if it mm. will be very easy to, to certify uh, all different transactions, it also will be very easy to reconstruct yeah. the whole blockchain. Yeah. People will, do, will be able to do that very, yeah. very, very fast. And so at the end, the strong point of blockchain is what go goes against, against uh, the technology itself. So I think that blockchain will have some applications. Meanwhile, other technology, other transactional systems will require other approaches, more traditional approaches, centralized databases, etc. Mm -hmm. So, and w what about blockchain in the area of uh, of utilities, mm -hmm. energy, water? Mm -hmm. uh, well, do you see any application there? Yeah, I mean, in fact, in terms of energy, there are a lot of, uh, of initiatives. Uh, I know I know many in Spain, so I guess that around the world there are not have to be many more. Uh, in fact, this is very, this is very, uh, if you mean, so if you imagine or you envision a scenario where people is able to generate their own energy, so by using solar panels, etc., yeah. so, and you can sell whatever energy it's, uh, it's remaining, uh, well, having a distributed system that doesn't, is not requiring a, an electric company, well, it has a lot of sense because I can use the, the energy that uh, today this region of, the, of, my, of my country is, uh, is generating and it will be subtracted from the energy that uh, I generated uh, during the other days that uh, it was sun in my, in my region. Mm -hmm. So you can do this kind of, of models and for creating like a co-ops of, uh, of uh, energy consumption. And this is a very nice use case because the regulator, well, energy sector in is another time. In that, in that case, it makes no sense, in at least in Spain, as far as I know, because it's strongly regulated. But, but it, will be, it will be easier to, to, well, because you can install a solar panel in the roof of your home and you can, it's more hackable than, than a national system of banks or whatever. Yeah. So, yes, but in, I mean, water consumption, in, I guess that similar examples can exist. So okay, I we, think that, yes. we can make another session on <laughs> how to hack your solar panels. <laughs> exactly. And I'm absolutely sure that it will have a lot of, a lot of audience. Okay, so let's see some of the questions that we are getting. Um, which is the main risk of blockchain? What do you see the main risk of, of blockchain? So, first of all, the, the lack of scalability of the model, because uh, so despite the, the bubble, despite all the all the all the hype that it had now, uh, it cannot escalate. So, I mean, if we are using, for example, for, for managing the energy consumption of a whole country, Bitcoin, uh, sorry, blockchain doesn't, it's not able to escalate this, this way. So, I mean, at the end, you need other, other, other ways to, to deal with that. Mm, the big problem of blockchain is that uh, it might generate a false, a false sensation of security. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we think that just by saying blockchain yeah. uh, everything is magic Secure, and everything yeah. is super democratic and, etc. And, and then we don't we don't enter to see what's really happening in this, in this blockchain i mean i can create a blockchain that is really secure that the technology is amazing but that every time that someone is using that uh, a 10 percent of these transactions are coming to me and well if you are not aware of that uh, the system will be crypto cryptographically perfect mm -hmm. but it will not be fair because the people that created this blockchain had some uh, interest to do that. Some hidden know, agenda. Exactly. So, so this means that, sorry, I was going to interrupt you. This means that you have to be an advanced user to really use blockchain. I mean, because otherwise, if I'm, if I'm, uh, no, not, but if I'm not well educated, then you are going to so somehow make a fraud. You know that, that me is me, you know, because I have a, a national identity card that I can show yeah. you that has been expedited by, by the police and you trust the police. Yeah. No? Blockchain. Uh, well, it, uh, it removes the need of having the, the, the police, don't say no. I mean, you can register yourself in this blockchain and then, well, yes, this information for sure will be this information, but it doesn't mean that this information is backed up by the reality. Yeah. Meanwhile, the third party that was before certifying all the different things was maybe doing some proof of reality on the, yeah. on the, different, on the different issues that then they were certifying. So, well, in cryptocurrencies is one different thing, but uh, when you are applying that on, on, on other scales, well, the, uh, sometimes you need this. The, in fact, in blockchain, they are called oracles. No? They are called, so for example, the example that I was giving you that saying, okay, if tomorrow rains, I will give you 10. The blockchain will ensure that if this oracle is telling them, that it's telling the system that tomorrow, and that, uh, well, the day after today, was, uh, it, uh, it was raining, uh, the system will do the transaction. But who is ensuring that it was really raining? 
that the computer doesn't know if it was raining or not. He's reading a database that, uh, that says that, okay, uh, yesterday was, was raining. But, okay, maybe you need the proof that this was really raining because yeah. imagine that you have to travel today and tomorrow you are not here, so you will not be able to check if it was raining or not. And I control this oracle. And this, uh, or I hack the, the, the database that is uh, giving this information. So the blockchain will work fine, but we will trust the technology and, and the technology will not be aligned with the reality. So uh, we can say in another words that a consistent database not necessarily maps reality. Exactly. It's like the right. GPS in the car. I mean, you can blindly flow, uh, follow the, the GPS. And this is dangerous. I mean, yeah. you need to say, no, okay, the GPS is telling me to turn right, but I see a sign here that is, it says forbidden to turn right. Yeah, there's a so cliff there. Exactly, <laughs> I mean, and, and you need to be aware of the reality. So yeah. sometimes trusting the technology is so much or so blindly, it's not a matter of being an advanced user. It's just a matter that, well, um, regulators and, and certifiers exist for a reason. And the reason is to, to align what they are certifying with the reality. If we are basing everything in the, in the digital world, well, who, who is feeding this digital world with uh, evidences from, from, the real, from the real world? Yeah. Yeah. About cybersecurity, mm -hmm. is a blockchain system easier to hack than a normal system? They are asking us. I mean, the system itself, it's not, I mean, it's based on cryptography and a very strong cryptography. So yeah. uh, the fact of having a chain of, cryptograph of cryptographic operations make the, the system really robust. Uh, to change a single block means that you need to change all the, 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 the blocks that appear later than, than, than this one. So this makes it the system, as more operations and as more time passes, uh, more security is the transaction that I did 10 days ago. But it's true that the last transaction of the blockchain can be easily changed. I, I only need a small consensus of people to change this, mm. this last transaction. Well, I need just half of the, of, the, of the people to do that and just to perform one operation. So instead of doing thousands of operations because the transactions have occurred later. So it's secure or it's insecure. I mean, I will say that it's as secure or as, as insecure as all, all systems, Any but system. they are using cryptography. So, but you can just you know, cryptography. Cryptography was invented, I mean, uh, 10 centuries before, before, uh, before uh, computers or uh, blockchain. No, no, before Jesus Christ. I mean, it was, it was discovered a lot by, by the, by the Egypt, um, no, the Phoenicians. Yeah. They, they have, a, they have, a, you can write a lot of uh, letters in a, in a leather, in a stripe of leather, and you can, you need to roll the, the leather into a, a, a stick, stick of, a, yeah. of a given, of a given width to get the message. So this is cryptography. Mm -hmm. So, by applying cryptography into the systems, you don't make the systems more secure. You make systems more coherent with the information that they are maintaining. But this doesn't mean that they are more secure. For example, I can take your, your private keys for encryption in, the, in the, your computer or whatever, and, and I can change that. And the encryption will work, but it will not be what you are expecting. So, mm -hmm. cryptographically, it is working. But uh, in terms of uh, matching to the, what you are expecting, you have been hacked because someone had access to this. And this is the problem that Bitcoin had with, uh, uh, well, not Bitcoin, but the, the exchanges where you can exchange uh, Bitcoins for real, real money. Yeah. Uh, they are working in a, so the digital currencies that, uh, that you have, they are stored, they are entries in a, in a digital concept that is called like a, a wallet, a mm -hmm. digital wallet. Mm -hmm. This wallet is just that, it's a file that is encrypted using one private key and one public key. Mm -hmm. And the big problem that, uh, that uh, changes had uh, in, the, in the past, and in fact, when you see the, that there is a big drop on the, on the, on the value of blockchain, is mostly probably, probably the caused because someone hacked this exchange and steal the private key of this exchange. This means that they had access to all the different wallets of their, of their clients and they could be able to, to make all the transactions, all the, so they can be transferred all the Bitcoins to their or own, or own, own account. So it's secure or it's insecure. I mean, if, the, if someone enters to my bank and steals money from my bank, I know that my bank is insured and they will pay me back this money. And probably I will not know that they had this, mm -hmm. this leak of money. But uh, in blockchain, people know. And, and you see that someday you don't have the money that you were expecting to have there. Yeah. And it's this is you because a hacker enters to the system and, and steals your, your money. And you cannot say uh, anything to anyone because then you cannot, you cannot find them. So, well, it has their, their pros and their cons. I mean, it's... Okay. Um, if we want to implement blockchain 
mm -hmm. which are the steps that we have to, to take? I mean, how do we... Go to Google mm -hmm. and say, <laughs> implement blockchain. No, I mean, implementing a, a blockchain is very easy. I mean, uh, a basic blockchain. Uh, if you want to create your own private blockchain, uh, you can go to Google, put that, and there are some, some it's just a software, it's just a program that you can install in your computer and you can set up the, the, the zero node that it's called, that it's the, the first block on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. and, and once you have that created, you only need a function to generate so a, a software, um, an algorithm to generate the next blocks and, a, and another algorithm to sign every, every block. Once you have that, you mm -hmm. can have the, your own blockchain. If you want to use uh, a more sophisticated uh, schema with the smart contracts, etc., etc., there are a lot of companies that are offering these services so like packetized to, to implement that as a software as a service. So model. you mean the blockchain is already uh, nowadays a solution that many software providers can offer you? Exactly. So the same way you buy an email or you buy exactly. a SQL database, you can say, okay, exactly. I want a blockchain for my whatever function. The, the problem is that usually you need, I mean, a lot of users to make the blockchain uh, secure or to make the, the, the blockchain useful because otherwise, I mean, you are the only one having <laughs> a blockchain in your computer. I mean, it has no sense. Install a database and, and, and use it, just that. So, well, I mean, but it's really easy to, to, I mean, in fact, you don't need any software to do blockchain. Blockchain is just that. Is, a, a set of data sets that uh, mm, for some reason one is refer uh, referencing the other, other one. So if you do that and you create a function for stamping it that can be, okay, mm, imagine that these are transactions. So calculate me a number that makes that the sum of this number with the one that is in the transaction sums zero, mm -hmm. something like that. Of course, this is how it works blockchain. In fact, it's more complicated, but it's something like that. Uh, and from here, well, every people that wants to install here the, their, their blogs, they can do that following this, 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 this line. This line. Yeah. So it's okay. really easy. So Oscar, we are about to reach our hour of, of seminar or of, of session. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your company. Mm -hmm. So how do you see the future? Uh, what are the next developments that you're doing, the next products, the next... Well, we uh, are... Uh, do you see the future? I mean, in our, in our case, working in, in privacy and working in, sec in data security is really important. I mean, at the end, we are, we are, a, we are a healthcare company. You know? We are a company working in personalized medicine, but uh, we are doing that in a very, in a very disruptive approach, which is based on, on your genomic data, on your DNA data. This means that, uh, well, if we envision a world where people, is governments or insurance companies or healthcare providers, etc., they are offering this kind of services based on your DNA. It means that at some point we need to create databases where are storing uh, these, these genomic sequences. And this is a very big problem because your DNA tells a lot of things about you. In fact, it tells, I mean, it's the most private information that you can have. I mean, it, you cannot change it. You cannot fake it. You cannot, it mm, says things about the risk that you have to suffer some diseases. It says things about who are your parents. It says things about your predispositions to mm, have uh, Alzheimer's, to have Alcoholism to be an, uh, to develop alcoholism to develop uh, well uh, sexual orientations etc etc so there are a lot of things that 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 are coded in your in your DNA. I, this information in, in wrong hands is really bad. I mean mm -hmm. it can it can really destroy the life of a politician or it can destroy the life of a famous uh, actor or mm -hmm. or a sportsman or a football play player that uh, because they have a risk of having a sudden death then the clubs then don't, don't want to, to to hire him so this is really a sensitive uh, information and if you imagine that mm, at some point the health system will require people to have that how we manage the security and the data privacy in this mm -hmm. in this new in this new paradigm it's a really sensitive matter mm -hmm. so it it's, it's, it's not just a matter of uh, how to make it possible it's just a, ma a matter of okay whenever this is possible uh, the second day the, the, the next day we will have a problem about how to um, how to secure that this information is well how to ensure that this information is really secure so this is what we are working in. So we are creating, uh, we are solving that, that the problems that today uh, healthcare providers have in order to deliver personalized medicine services, but we are not analyzing uh, the genomic data. This is other people that are doing that. Mm -hmm. But what we ensure is that they can do that, that in a very low cost, uh, well, in a very cost efficient uh, uh, manner. And at the same time, solving the next problem, because whenever this happens, the second problem will happen, that is, managing the privacy and ensuring that your data and your genome is really yours and you are the only one that is uh, allowed to, to control this information. 
Because, so, uh, sorry, how much, how much does it cost to me now to, to get my genome? I mean, is it, is it feasible? Yeah, for, yeah, for I, mean, I mean, you can have your genome uh, right now for around three, 400, uh, 400 euros. But uh, 400 euros allows something that it's magic, that, it's, that it can be financed. And it can be financed that just by paying 10 euros per month, you can have your genome. Provided that you are, uh, you, are you are staying with an insurance company, for example, two years or something like that. And at the same time, mm, we have a, a so far a not knowledge about what to do in order of, in terms of prevention, in terms of diagnosis, in terms of personalized treatment, that this information, the payback of mm, putting this uh, 400 uh, euros, uh, the insurance company can, um, uh, well, can, can, uh, save. can save this, this, this amount or, in, in uh, two years. Sorry for being so uh, black-minded, let's mm -hmm. say, could be the other way around because if they identify that I'm a too expensive patient, mm -hmm. they can say, "Sorry, Mr. Soldevilla, we that's don't want you." No, that, this, yeah, this could that's, be also a, that's the point about security and privacy. So, despite an insurance company offers you personal genomic services, yeah. uh, they don't have access to this information. But how you trust them? You don't yeah. trust them. And this is where the yeah. trust uh, uh, applies. No, so I I can ensure you that your data will be encrypted there. Okay, perfect but then you will need to make transactions out of it. And how you ensure that these transactions are really going to the people that I'm saying that, I'm that they are going? I can give you a contract saying, okay, mm, I ensure you that I sign this paper saying that I will give that and I put the, the, well, all the legal aspects that are required in order to make it possible. That is how it, works, it is working right now. But uh, I can also offer you another alternative that is saying, technologically speaking, uh, this, I mean, this transaction, it's by default going to this person. I cannot fake the system in order that it goes to, to another, another recipient. So you can trust your, doc, your doctor, but you cannot trust the company. Yeah. So, and, and, and the doctors, they have uh, all the le legislation, the, the ontological code, et cetera, et cetera, so they cannot uh, reveal some, some, some pieces of your, of your clinical records. And they can do so far. I mean, if your doctor sees you and says, oh, this guy is, 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 is yeah. really bad, he will like not. going to have so a heart disease he, in he, one year. Right now, he <laughs> could be telling the, the insurance company, and they don't, and they don't they do don't that. Do it, yeah. So, because it's illegal. <laughs> the first thing, because it's not illegal. And, and well, in putting all these technologies and these crypto crypt technologies on that ensures just that. Ensures that um, despite we are talking about digital information, this digital information is secured in the, in the different, well, along the value chain. So this is something that, well, uh, we'll, our, our vision is that, is that um, healthcare, personalized medicine will be implemented in healthcare mm. channels, either governments or, or insurance companies. And these channels are really, I mean, people can really not trust them in order how they manage this, this data. So we need to provide tools to the, to the end user, to the patient, in order to ensure that all the data is secured along the, the, different, the, different, the different stakeholders. Okay, we have three minutes. Let mm -hmm. me be a little bit futuristic. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see one day in where Google or Facebook will have uh, as part of your profile mm -hmm. the DNA. Yeah. They, they, are in best, they are investing heavily uh, in, uh, in a lot of genomic companies. So in fact, there, there is uh, Google Genomics, which is a, a cl uh, Google Cloud. Uh, so the, the servers that they are offering to, to companies just for doing genomic data management. Data, data. Amazon, they also have uh, Amazon Genomics. Well, no, I mean, it's a, it's a, what, it's just I a, can offer you products based on your ADN, that sounds yeah, to me. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, depending on which side are you, that that's, looks that's great. The, that's the, our, I mean, we're an European company, so our bet is in the, in the privacy space, on the, following the GDPR recommendations, etc., yeah. etc. Et the American way is the other way around. Yeah. It's, okay, let's take all the data we have and let's make the most money out of it. But, uh, well, I mean, we have bad things in being in Spain that uh, we don't have access to the big founts of Silicon Valley. But, uh, well, uh, we can be really focused on, on something more, more niche, which is the, 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 the privacy. And the, but we believe that in the European market is something that will be really mm, valued in, in very few years from, from now. Because there was this company, 23andMe, you probably mm -hmm. have heard about them. The, their business model is, is selling data. Yeah, selling because data of their yeah, the owner of this company was the ex-wife yeah, of yeah, the yeah. founder of Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that sounds really scary, right? No, and, and, and the business model of 23andMe is selling data to pharma companies. I mean, that, but they declare that. I mean, they say it's aggregated, it's anonymously. Uh, but the fact is that if you anonymize, as you know, 
It's no longer a genome. It's another thing because yeah. what we said before, it's something that it really identifies you. Yeah. If I disaggregate that and I, I do something to transform the data, okay, then it's not useful. I mean, it's useful as far as it's unique and Related it's linked with it, you. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the big challenge is this one, is how to think about different models regarding genomics that mm, the business model is different than selling data. And this means applying it in the, into the healthcare space. Mm -hmm. and, and well, and looking for the payers that will pay for that. That, that are the traditional payers that are paying for healthcare, so insurance companies, government, etc. And, and the value proposition that we are doing to them is just that, is okay, you will be able to offer these services to, the, to, your, to your clients and we ensure that you will be compliant and you will be really, I mean, people will not have to fear you about uh, delivering these services because technologically speaking, this is completely, uh, it's like a Ford Knox of mm -hmm. genomics that you can don't have access to, to, the, to the data. And this provides trust to the, to the, okay. to the consumers. Okay, Oscar, uh, would be, we would be with you talking for hours and hours because that, that is an amazing, an, an amazing topic. Uh, but uh, we have been for one hour with you mm -hmm. and it has been a, a big pleasure. Uh, we have been followed by many people on the internet that have been asking you questions. And we only want to uh, thank you mm -hmm. for being here with us to share this, this session with our audience. And to the audience, we encourage you to keep on following our sessions and we will give you information about our future sessions in, in the short term. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Oscar. Thank you.